This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents on God's Online Church of Love, Second Service, and Rashad is singing, I Belong to You. Okay. I've been captured by your love I can't explain. And now you have me, and I forever change. I've abandoned everything I ever known. And now I surrender. My life is not my own. I belong to you. Amen. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. And I can capture by your love I can explain. Hey, and now you have me, and I forever change. Now I've abandoned everything I ever known. Now I surrender. This life is not my own. Now I surrender. <laughs> is that it? Is yes, that it? because the song is mainly like oh, a, that part is supposed to be sung by a chorus, like mm-hmm. a choir. So I can't really sing that by myself. Y'all oh, always okay. sing it. That's okay. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Now, welcome, everybody. I'm getting ready to mute our mic, and Rashad may sing another song once he finds the lyric. But for right now, I am going to read scripture. I'd like you to turn with me to Luke chapter 5. And then we're going to go to Luke chapter 18, I believe. Okay, Luke chapter 5. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Luke chapter 5, starting in verse, let's see here. Starting in verse 12. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Listen, you guys. I'm going to move on to other scripture in a minute, but listen. In the Old Testament, you were not to touch a leper. I think in the New as well. They stayed without the camp. They stayed away from everybody. They had to go around hollering, stay away, leper, 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 to warn people not to get within a certain vicinity. Now, what I want to say about that is, Jesus, being the high priest, was also not to touch a leper. However, check this out. He touched him. That's what he came to do. Touch what no one is supposed to touch. Handle what no one is supposed to handle. What no one would handle. What no one would touch. If you feel like you are a lost cause, if you feel like there is no hope for you, no help for you, if people have made you feel like you're a waste of space, 
like you should never have been born. If you feel that way, Jesus is here to tell you that's a lie from the pit. He came to touch what no one else would touch. Listen, I remember when my husband had a case of constipation. And he had to handle part of himself that normally we don't want to handle. I love him so much that I handled it for him. Now, there are times when you can't even touch your own mess. There are times when you can't even handle what's messed up inside of you, what has gotten contaminated, even sometimes by your own actions or by the actions of others. And you turn yourself off. You disgust yourself. But God says, come boldly to the throne of grace to find help. Listen, when you're in need, you come boldly. I was talking to a young lady the other day. You don't growl to come to God for his help. You don't growl and beg for his love. You don't growl and beg for his attention. God already loves you. He's there for you. You don't have to get on your knees and brown nose him. That's not the kind of savior you have. Every scar on his back that he allowed his own creation to inflict on him was for those things in us that are untouchable those disgusting areas that make us sick of ourselves. God says be patient. He wants you to wait because your redemption draweth nigh. There are times when we have to wait for our change to come. We have to trust God when we see no results. I'm still messing up over here. I'm still messing up over there. God, what's wrong with me? He may not give you an answer right now, but trust me, he knows. He's not sitting up there saying, I don't know, let me see. Let me run a few more tests. Uh, no, let me do an x-ray. No, no. God knows what's wrong with you. And God works in schedules. He will not do anything before it's time. So when you feel like you are developmentally disabled spiritually, consider the palm tree. The palm tree is in a yard. It is a runt. It is just sprouted. And it's down closer to the ground than the weeds are. The weeds sprout up in a day or two. And they outgrow the palm tree. The grass grows, and it outgrows the palm tree if it's not mown that mowed down. You look at the little palm tree. Now consider this now. The palm tree takes five to six years to grow deep into the soil. It takes that long. But check this out. While it's growing down deep, all the other plants, hey, I'm graduating from junior high. Hey, I'm getting my high school diploma. Hey, I got my first job. Now listen, I'm, I'm making an allegory, so don't think I'm cuckoo. I'm a little crazy, but I ain't that cuckoo. Listen to my example. When the palm tree is down that low, developmentally slow. What ends up happening is, as a human being, you look around at everybody else and you do what the Bible says not to do. You compare yourself with other people. 
And there are people who look like they're growing real fast, Jack, real fast. But you have to remember where they started. Number one, God's got your roots going deep. So all the surface stuff still looks like it's a mess. But God's got your roots going deep because you're hungry, you're thirsty, and you're digging for God. You're digging deep for God. You want to know him. You want to experience his love. Well, listen, you will. But don't think that it's going to happen overnight. God knows how long it's going to take you to get from point A to point B, from point G to point M. He knows what it takes to get you to progress from level to level. Now, here you are, the palm tree, three or four years, still struggling, still dealing. It's like, you know, am I ever going to be anything? Palm tree, other things, rose bushes, growing two feet, three feet tall. Palm tree still a little rut, probably maybe a foot if it's lucky. That's you. And all the bushes, all the church folks, all the Christians that are around you just seem to be growing in leaps and bounds. And they have it together and they know how to speak the church lingo. And they know how to dress the dress, walk the walk, talk the talk, put on the masquerade, because many of them are faking. Not all. There are very real people out there. But you're comparing yourself to them. You don't know their story. God does. In the meantime, you're digging, you're crying, you're frustrated, you're scratching, pulling your hair out, wondering when will your change come, because you're steadily asking God, and some of you are begging God, which you don't have to do. Now, one day, all of a sudden, the palm tree starts to grow. It's growing in, in leaps and bounds. I mean, like within a year or two, it's up at the height of the fence. Well, how does that happen? Fullness of time. You will experience exponential growth in the fullness of time, but you must keep trusting God. Keep trusting yourself in God's hands Keep trusting your messed up self in God's hand. So here you are. You're growing. You're growing. Now, you, Jesus talks about importunity. You need perseverance, persistence, and endurance. And you also need to be patient with yourself. God's not in a hurry. You are. So here he, here's the palm tree. It's growing now. It's growing. It's not as fast, but it's, it's faster than it was all of the last four or five years. It's growing now. Wow. Oh, I'm the same height as the rose. It's the tallest rose bush. Right. But listen, this is what you don't know. God, if you can picture in your mind a racetrack. God gave me this revelation years ago. Picture a racetrack. We're talking about progress now, so hang in there with me. Picture a racetrack, and you've got about six or seven lanes. Now, you're not even on the racetrack. You're outside of the park. That's how messed up you started out. But there are people on the racetrack that are maybe 10 feet ahead of the starting line, some 5 feet ahead, some 20 feet ahead. Because this is a different racetrack than a regular conventional race. This is the race. To God. So here these people start in different positions. Are you hearing me? The person that's halfway up the track, they're going to be ahead of you for a long time. But guess what? While you're still trying to get ready for the race, it looks like everybody's going to cross that finish line before you get anywhere near it. But then you get on the track with your raggedy shoes, your old sneakers, the holes in your underarms, 
the, the hole in the back of your pants. You're not smelling too good, but you're there and you're gonna you're gonna do this thing. You're gonna dig in. And you dig your hands in the dirt, you bend those knees and you get in position and you go. And you start going. And before you know it, you're picking up pace. And you're picking up pace. And you're picking up pace. Now, you're halfway down, halfway. Halfway, maybe a quarter of the way. But look where you came from. You came from a block from the from the track. You weren't even in the park. You were a block away. Everybody else started on the track. So when you look at progress, baby cakes, you have come much further in the time you had than they did in the time they had. That's why you cannot compare yourself. You're keeping score by man's standards. God's keeping score by his own standards. Now, I encourage you to keep pursuing God. No matter how low you fall, no matter how poorly you fail, no matter how discouraged and hopeless you feel, keep pursuing him. When the Bible says, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. That means you are to ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. You know why? Jesus tells a story. For the sake of time, I'm just going to tell it. He tells a, 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 a parable of a man who has a friend. He has somebody that comes in unexpectedly from a long journey. It's around midnight. He has nothing to feed him with. So he goes to his friend's house. You know, you can't go to everybody's house knocking on their door in the middle of the night. He goes to his friend's house. And he's knocking and knocking and, you know, can give me some bread. I need something to feed uh, this guy, my guest with. He came on a long journey, and I have nothing to give him. He's like, hey, I'm in bed. Kids are in bed. Everybody's in bed. Go on. I can't be bothered with you. We're sleep. Jesus said, the man keeps knocking. I'm elongating the story. He keeps knocking, and the man is disgusting. Now, he gets out the bed and goes and gets the bread out of disgust and exasperation, not for friendship, but because the man would not give up. And I tell you, you better not give up because God is telling you the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You push and you keep pushing. I remember when my niece was having her baby. And we heard her in the hallway. And she got to the point where she said, I can't, I can't. And her husband said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Push, push, I can't, push. Guess what? She did. Sometimes it takes a while. Labor can last what? From a half an hour or a few minutes to eight to 30-something hours? You have no idea what you're pushing out during your struggle. You are pregnant with destiny. God has put something in you. And the push, the struggle, the fight is part of what God needs you to go through for you to be able to handle what he has called you to do. So you're pushing and you're trying not to give up. But you want to go lay down and cry, curl up in the ball, and have a pity party. Yeah, we get it. We all been there. There's nothing new. But get back out the bed. Go take a shower. Get dressed. And get back in the race. Because the race 
was the rewards and all of that was not given to the swift, was not given to the strong, but to those who endure until the end. Trust me, keep enduring until your change comes. Your change will come. Do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Don't faint not now. You're pregnant with destiny. You're pregnant with God's calling and assignments and gifting. You cannot quit because, listen, if you want to fly into God's destiny, destiny, you want to soar like the butterfly, like the eagle. Listen to what the butterfly goes through. When he's fighting to come out of his cocoon, now think of the cocoon. There comes that part that even some of us call it the wilderness part of our journey. Well, I call it a cocoon era, so to speak. And it's a season for the cocoon. Get inside, wrap yourself up, and assume the position, baby, because you ain't going nowhere right now. You're stuck. You're stuck. A cocoon is tight. The butterfly barely has room to wiggle. And it's held up in that thing, changing from a caterpillar to a butterfly. But the metamorphosis is not complete until it's time for him to break out of the cocoon. Now, why is the cocoon not just unzip and open up for him? Yeah, that would make sense to us, wouldn't it? No, he has to struggle. Some butterflies struggle longer than other butterflies struggle. But the bottom line is when the struggle is complete, baby cakes, wings and muscles are strong enough to take flight. You can't take flight. You can't fly up on the wind if you have no muscle power. And God has things coming your way. You have to have the strength to endure. You want to lift 400 pounds? Guess what you got to do to do it? Importunity. How bad do you want it? Now, I'm not going to hold long. I believe that is it. And I hope that you really, really got something out of that. But remember, talking about the palm tree. What does the palm tree end up doing? When it gets to the point where it starts shooting up after seven years, it shoots exponentially. And it's like, whoa, I did a thing in my book where I, I was talking like the palm tree. And I said, whoa, I'm growing so fast. My, my, my uh, I forgot what you called. My palms are spinning. You know how they say your head's spinning. Listen, when you look after 10 years, the tallest thing on the block is the palm tree. Do you know how magnificent, how great, how strong, how tall you're going to stand in the spirit, in the things of God, if you ride this wave out, baby? Ride it out. See where it will take you. Don't jump off the board now. Stay on that board and ride that wave out. You can do it. You can do it. God would not allow you to go through it if you could not. And if your struggle is big, it's because your calling is big. <laughs> Be encouraged, you guys. God bless you. Now, if Rashad has a song, he can give me the thumbs up. But for right now, we're going to pray a closing prayer, and then we'll open up the mics in a second. Father, we ask you right now to encourage. We ask you, Lord, to let this message encourage someone who really, really needs it, Father. Hopefully, hopefully it will be more than one. But we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to let this word germinate inside and grow and build muscle and build endurance and build sticking power. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you, Lord. 
for what you got planned ahead of us, Lord. I thank you and bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Now I'm going to unmute the mics, and first I'm going to ask Rashad if he has a song, and we're going to see what he says. And if not, then we'll continue with our conversation. Now, let's see. Un Rashad, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hey. Hey. Song. Oh, yeah. I have one pertaining to your message. Okay. Well, uh, turn on your webcam for folks who like to see <laughs> who belongs to that beautiful voice. Okay. All right. <laughs> and then we'll open up for prayer, you guys. Anybody has prayer requests, don't go anywhere. We're almost done. Okay, Rashad. All right. I really haven't practiced this, this song, so I'm just going to kind of okay, give you a little. Just sing. Trust God. Just sing. Sometimes you feel like your work's in vain. When it looks like you see the sun, here comes the rain. You try your best to wear a smile, but you're hurting so. Don't you dare give up, you keep holding on. Be not weary in your well-doing, for you shall reap if you fail not. But wait on the Lord and be of good courage, for you shall reap. If you fail and more to it, but I don't want to try to sing because I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. That lines right up with what we were talking about. Thank you so much, Rashad. I really appreciate that. Wow. Okay, you guys. Now mics are open. And we are ready to chit-chat. I'm going to turn the uh, recorder off now. <laughs> 